The day has come. After all these tractor videos, the ground preparation, after the long days and hard work on the rice farm, finally, in this episode of Rice Farming TV, we'll be planting rice by airplane. Yes, that's right, folks. The planes are soaring above our flooded fields. We're going to learn all about how we plant rice seed here in California. We'll visit the airstrip and learn how the ag planes are loaded with seed between flights. We'll even hang off the wing of a plane and get a bird's eye view of the seeding process. A special thanks to Williams Ag Service, Crop Care by Air. Yes, it's going to be high flying fun, but first, for those of you just tuning in, you may be asking, how did we get here this far along the planting process? Well, here's a rapid fire review of the past several tractor videos, the last several weeks of preparing the ground for seeding rice. Ready? Drain our fields of winter water. Shovel work. Fields dry under the spring sun. Plow chisel, help dry out the soil. Tillage disc, help break down the dirt clods. Land plane, help level out the soil. Shovel work. Aqua bar, injects nitrogen three inches deep into the dry worked soil. Roller applies a nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium blend to the surface of the soil. Flood our fields with irrigation water and a whole lot more. Yes, after all the tractor work, here we are now. The fields are flooded with irrigation water, about two inches deep and ready to be seeded. That's right. Only two inches deep. We don't want the fields too deep. High water could present potential issues for baby rice, but I'll explain all that later. Let's get right into planting rice by airplane. As our irrigation water begins to move across our rice fields, we call up our seed supplier and place our order. How much rice seed we plan to plant. In our case, our seeding rate is 165 pounds an acre. Our seed supplier, by the way, is a rice farmer just like us. But rather than selling their rice from the previous harvest to be milled for consumption, they store and care for their rice, preserving the viability over the winter. And after we put our order in over at CBM Warehouse with Kenny and the boys, they load the rice seed into trailers and give it a water bath soak. As the seed absorbs water, the soak does two primary things. Adds water weight, so the rice seed sinks down to the soil as it hits the flooded field, and starts the germination process. Remember, as the seeds are soaking a couple days before application, that irrigation water is moving across the fields. So all the weed seeds out there are starting to germinate as well. The soak in the trailer prevents the rice seed germination from falling too far behind the competing weed seeds. We'll confirm to our seed grower once our rice field has been completely flooded with irrigation water. Ask for him to drain the seed of the soak and deliver the trailers to the airstrip to be flown on. Simultaneously, we'll schedule the flight and seeding rate with the flying service. In our case, Williams Ag Service with a requested seeding rate of 165 pounds per acre. And now that the rice seed has been delivered to the airstrip, loader trucks are filled. The loader truck then fills the plane's hopper. The hopper holds about 1,650 pounds of rice seed. So seeding a 150 acre field like ours at a rate of 165 pounds per acre, it would take about 15 trips back to the airstrip to reload with rice in order to complete the job. Depending on the distance from the airstrip to the target field, that 150 acres could be seeded in less than an hour. And there's my boy Sean. You remember Sean from episode 63 when we took a Cessna flight together and he gave me an aerial tour of our winter rice fields. I'll leave the link to that video down in the description. That was a lot of fun and if you haven't watched it, check it out. Now once the plane's hopper is loaded, the ground crew and loader truck get clear. Sean is clear for takeoff and the magic happens. It's time to seed our rice fields. And Sean takes flight, locked and loaded, ready to rain rice from above.
Sean and his fellow ag pilots are amazing. They do an amazing job in dangerous situations, especially flying around, above, and below power lines. They are dropping rice seed in the right place with several safety issues to consider. They're heroes, in my opinion, really. As Sean approaches our field, he has a GPS guidance system helping him keep track of his flight path. The system is pre-programmed for the coverage width of the seating application. When he completes a pass and makes a wide U-turn and approaches his next pass, the guidance lights above his dash direct him. Red means he's offline, green signals that he's online, on the right path. This all ensures a uniform application, not only that the whole field is seated, but the seating rate is the same across the field. When the hopper is open and dropping seed, each pass with the plane covers a width of 45 to 50 feet. The plane is traveling between 120 to 130 miles per hour when seeding, so Sean can cover a whole lot of ground fast. It's just the most efficient way we can seed a field here in California. It's just so mesmerizing. Perhaps I'm romanticizing seeding our rice fields by airplane so much because we have put a lot of hard work into preparing the ground. You have watched us through the spring in all my tractor videos, so you know. So you know that watching the planes above our fields is just so rewarding. And Sean empties his hopper and returns to the airstrip for more seed. The process continues until the field has been completely seeded. our first field on May 4th and our last on May 17th. That's a tight window those 13 days. It's a testament to our hard work on the ground and in the tractors, as well as the hard work of the ag pilots in the sky dropping seed. Perhaps the only springtime sight that rivals watching seed fall from the plains is witnessing the baby rice plants emerging from the water. At the beginning of this episode, I mentioned that we don't want our flood irrigated fields too deep during seeding. We want them about two inches deep. It's our philosophy, some rice farmers agree, and some differ. But the reasoning is that we want the plants to get out of the water as soon as possible. Once the plant can begin effective photosynthesis out of the water, it focuses its energy on its root system. A strong root system anchors the plant into the soil. This avoids drift on high windy days. We don't want the wind to push all our seed to one side of the field. Strong roots prevent this. Also, remember, we injected fertilizer three inches deep into the soil. Once the roots hit that nitrogen, the rice plant gets another boost of nutrients and helps early growth. Another concern deep water can bring, aside from drift, are algae blooms. Algae forms within the water and can rise to the surface. If the algae is thick enough and the rice plant hasn't yet reached the surface, there could be problems. The weak rice can't push through the blanket of algae. It will drown. In a past episode titled, Attack of the Evil Scum, I go into that more in depth. Link also down in the description. So you see, the tractor work is over. The rice has been seeded, but the work does not stop. The farming does not stop. We need to monitor and regulate our irrigation water and care for our seeds and baby rice. There are many competing weeds and insects out there, but this is all part of the cycle of farming. One phase of the process completes, and another phase begins. This is the green phase, folks. 
In a future episode, I'll give you a tour of our rice fields and update you on the rice plant's growth progress and health. Should be really green. I just want to give a quick thank you to Sean for setting up my GoPro on his plane and to Chris Hale for helping me out with some on the ground shots. Thank you boys, great work. Thanks to all of you for watching. This was a great series of videos that I think gave a pretty in-depth view of what it's like to put a new crop of rice in California. We've got a whole lot more to cover though through the crop year. I look forward to it. In fact, next episode, I've got so much excellent B-roll of in the sky of that GoPro footage on Sean's plane. I might just show you that and just, it's just so beautiful. So look out for that coming up. Otherwise, have a great start of the summer and I'll see you out in the fields. <laughs>